you're going to be blown away by this brand new heat embossing technique. Now I've tried out a lot of heat embossing techniques but this one absolutely amazed me. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I mean just look at that gorgeous detail, all the tiny little cracks, it's absolutely stunning and of course you're going to get different effects depending on the background, cardstock and the colour of embossing powder that you're using. So this is a technique that I discovered by accident but I have included it in my mixed media 10 minute technique series because I think it's fabulous and for mixed media it's absolutely perfect. I've created it on cardstock, you can do this on MDF, chipboard, whatever you want, whatever material, you can even go around shapes and dimension if you want to. I'm going to show you all of the details from start to finish on how to put this together so let's look at what materials we need to get started. I have tried this with lots of different mediums to make sure that you've got at home what you need to create this effect. So the items that I'm using all have alternatives. Now when it comes to embossing powder, absolutely any embossing powder is fine. I think metallics work beautifully but you can do it with matte as well. Embossing ink, absolutely fine, any brand as well, as well as the heat tool. Um, you do need something like Mod Podge. I've used a matte paper Mod Podge, but this is just because it's the one I had. So I did try this out again with a wet glue that dries clear and it does work, but I do find the wet glue takes longer to dry than the Mod Podge does. Now I've done this first example onto this sort of blue, blue, green cardstock. I'm going to do it this time onto an orange rust colour tag instead. So I've pre-die cut this and I'm going to be using silver embossing powder this time so we can see the difference. Something you absolutely must have, you really need though, is a non-stick or silicon mat. So something like this one, this is a heat resistant and non-stick mat that I use a lot in my craft and it just means that you can work on this and transfer it to your tag afterwards. So the first thing you want to do is apply some Mod Podge or maybe even some wet glue. If you've got a wet glue that is like this, it's white, it's runny and it dries clear, that's very important, that will also work quite well. I can't say this for every single brand of glue, so I would definitely suggest test out what you've got. Now I'm spreading this so it's around about the size of my tag. If you prefer, you can try this with a smaller area and then once you build up your confidence and you're happy with the results, you can do a larger piece. So I'm just using a foam applicator to spread this quite thinly. I can still see it's a nice opaque white though. And you will notice that on a non-stick or silicon mat you will get pooling and bubbling, but that's okay because we are going to go over this with a second layer in a moment once this is dry. Now I was really impatient when I first tested this out and I've actually used a heat tool to dry this off, which is another reason for using a heat resistant mat. Now I'm not holding the heat gun too close, again as always I'm just warming the air around it just to allow that to dry as quickly as possible. So I want this to dry clear ideally and certainly be tacky to the touch so that none of it comes off on my fingers when I touch it before I add a second layer. So that layer is almost dry, it's uh, definitely touch dry so it's not coming off my hands. That little bit of white left over is underneath the top skin that's dried so that white part is going to dry clear later on so don't stress too much about that. Now a second layer, now I'm going to add this one a little bit thinner because any glue that gets trapped between this and the first sort of top skin, um, if that doesn't dry during the dry, normal first drying process that isn't going, it's just going to sit there white. So I'm going to put this one a little bit thinner and I'm also going to go in opposite directions to the strokes that I did last time. So this side I did um, horizontal strokes, this time is vertical and over here I did vertical strokes, I'm going to go um, horizontal this time. And this is just going to create like a hatch so to, just to make sure that the glue kind of sticks to itself really well. Um, and bonds and creates almost a mesh here. Now I've overlapped the edges, it's fine, don't worry about that, just a second layer on here. And then again, make sure you dry that off. Now if you prefer, you can of course air dry this, you don't have to go in with a heat tool. 
there we go so that layer has dried clear as well now to add some embossing powder double check that this is not sticky tacky coming off on your hands at all I'm going to add my embossing ink this can be absolutely any clear embossing ink as you can see because of the wet glue underneath that oh well you may be able to see that's just smooched it a little bit now a little tip for you with this particular technique I would take a piece of cardstock fold under your silicone mat if that's what you're working on because if embossing powder touches a silicone mat it kind of grips to it really well it's so hard to get it off afterwards so I just fold it over to the edge of where your glue is you can sprinkle your powder all over this now unfortunately you're not going to see much because the powder is the same color as my mat um, but I will show you close up and hopefully you'll be able to see the melting happening so I've just sprinkled that all over and then I'm going to lift this up and tip it this way off straight onto the paper so it's not actually running all over the mat anywhere and getting stuck to that silicon material. Okay, so using my heat gun, just going to heat this up in the same way as I would as if the embossing powder was on paper. Now it's worth noticing that this is not going to be a smooth finish. You won't get that glossy smooth effect that you usually get with heat embossing you are going to get all of this these bubbles this texture i absolutely love this and it does help with the finished results so don't panic when this happens this is just the glue underneath reacting with the heat so uh, keep your heat gun moving as always make sure all of that embossing powder is melted don't stay in any one area for too long and as you'll see those air bubbles will shrink up and shrivel up again afterwards once you do take the heat away so again don't panic just keep going with it and just be sure that you are on a heat resistant mat or surface now a couple of things that I've noticed while doing this technique is that the embossing powder takes longer to melt than usual and it's very easy to miss spots. So make sure you pick it up and you look at it at the light, make sure there's no grainy, matte, powdery looking parts of the embossing powder. Make sure everything has got that gloss that you'd expect even if it's not smooth. Okay, now for the fun part. You need to make sure this is completely cooled. If need be, lift it up off of your desk, your surface. That's probably going to be quite warm. Put it outside for a bit, put it in the fridge, whatever it may be. Make sure this has completely, thoroughly cooled down before you attempt the next step. Now, once you're happy that this is completely cooled, you want to start lifting off one corner. You may need to pick it a bit, but this is why we've used two layers of either the Mod Podge or whatever glue you've chosen, because you want this to hold itself together. So just peeling that right off the mat. As you can see, the silicon mat is completely clean or as clean as it was when we started. And we've got this really fantastic Kind of sheet of glue now be aware it's going to be tacky underneath because this is that glue that was white that didn't quite dry i've actually even managed to pull off some of the staining off of my mat with the glue but that's fine it's all going to be hidden but this is really really the fun part we are going to start stretching pulling apart the embossing powder so very gently just start i would say start in the middle just a little bit and start pulling at the glue and you'll start to notice that the embossing powder just starts to crack away it just starts to come away from itself revealing those cracks now this takes a little while to work through and you want to do it gently again another reason for having two layers of glue so now I'm happy with how much I've pulled that apart I've got lots of cracks in there and when you lay it down on a darker surface you're really going to see through those so I'm going to stretch this and I have found that the thicker the embossing powder the better the crackles look um, but I'm going to stretch that over my tag or over the area that you want to cover making sure that it's kind of covering edge to edge there don't forget, of course, the back, the reverse is tacky in some places, or it certainly is on mine. And as I did, don't make sure you don't stick the back to the back there. So that will be up there and I will cut that off. So you can now adhere this down when you're happy with how much you've stretched it. 
try not to get too much in the way of cracks in it in the middle or holes in the middle you can use any glue you like but I prefer to use a clear glue here just to eliminate the risk of any white glue showing through afterwards so just stretching that over and gluing it to the tag you can then with scissors just cut around it and again it might not be that you're using your tag for this it might be a piece of MDF it might be something like a piece of wood a resin um, embellishment it could be shaped because of course this is flexible it will bend and you can put it around so rounded objects whatever they may be so it's really good fun as a covering so I'm just going to use my scissors now I'm going to carefully cut these edges so let's look at it as it is but we do have one more thing to do to it to make it even better I mean look how fabulous that is you will find for a little while you'll get bits come off just until it's all settled but I mean amazing you can see that color coming through underneath now let's take this one step further I am going to take some low tack tape a new piece and I'm just going to start putting it down in any areas where I want a bit more distressing going on I want it to lift up a little bit sometimes if you press really hard you can actually lift through the glue sometimes it will just lift the embossing powder off and what I quite like is that variation there we go so I've managed to get a bit of the glue lifted up it kind of looks like metal um, but metal that's uh, started to crumble maybe the paint the finish is coming off of it you get that texture in there you can try other types of tape if you prefer if you really want to get through and lift up the glue as well but I definitely prefer to kind of use a low tack tape to start with um, it will depend quite a bit on how thick all of your layers are so once you've got a little bit lifted up as well of the glue if you want to you can go ahead and peel some more off I wouldn't say peel lots off because you've just done all that work but it does add to the effect having some more of that orange or blue in this case coming through so that is two different color cardstocks with different color embossing powders on creating an amazing rustic and distressed metal look I just think they look absolutely fabulous so with the gold one here this one has a really great contrast between the two colors there although I didn't fill the tag completely um, this one I think I mean that would look even better I think if it just had black cardstock underneath to really contrast against the bright silver but have a go with the powders that you have at home and with different colored cardstocks so I hope you've enjoyed this if you're interested in more techniques like this make sure you take a look at the mix media 10 minute techniques playlist just here and if you're new to my channel I'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button or you can tap this icon just up here take care everybody I'll see you again very soon